What's up superstars? Welcome back to another Zero to Hero artwork series. Today we're taking on a pretty cool project where we'll be transforming an old school business card into a sleek new t-shirt design. So here's what we got. We've got a digitally scanned copy of a business card from a local plumbing company. It's a pretty vintage card as you guys can see. Some of the blacks starting to already fade but it's got a clear outline of the artwork, which is a great starting point. The company, they love their current layout, but has lost the original artwork file, which is pretty common. They're looking to freshen up the team's look with some new shirts featuring their classic designs, and that's where we'll come in play. So we're gonna keep the essence of the original design while giving it a fresh modern twist for their new shirts. Let's go ahead and dive into this process. Hi, in this tutorial, we will be vectorizing artwork from a real-life photo image. The artwork provided isn't very high quality, so we'll use it and import it into the vectorizer. This is an AI website that allows us to convert an image into a high-quality vector. However, it won't be very accurate since the artwork is quite pixelated. So, here are the results, and here is the image they want us to recreate. They'd like to remove the background and keep some elements of the artwork. We'll use the artwork they sent, which was in low quality, and vectorized it earlier so it can serve as a guide to create their character or mascot. We are going to take this one and use it as a guide to make their character or mascot, something like that. It got a bit weird because of the grouping of the vectorizer. Now we've got the character out, and as you can see, there are a lot of excess colors caused by the vectorizer due to its pixelation. Those discolorations are inevitable. So we'll have to delete those manually by clicking on them and pressing backspace. Now the real recreation begins. We'll start with the character itself. There are elements that were different from the original artwork. Let's polish all of them and use the pen tool to trace them manually. We'll add shapes one by one until eventually it becomes complete. I'm actually looking for fonts right now to be able to use for the text without having to trace them one by one. But let's proceed with the character first, so it's out of our minds later on. And we won't have so many problems altogether. I'm just going to click on these shapes that are not identical and use a color picker to change their colors to match the image. Now we'll try to replicate the oval shape inside the wrench. But we're trying to do that so it won't look awkward. So I guess we should be using a shape for this one. Since the manual pen tool isn't working as well as I thought. Let's try using the shape as an alternative and add some strokes into it. So let's go with the stroke, but make it thinner since it's very thick, then rotate it by clicking R. And then let's drag the anchor points to fit how we would like it to look like. Once it's set, let's use the Shape Builder tool and erase the outside parts of that oval shape. Let's just get this shape inside. Let's just move this thing closer to the inside. Since a part of it is coming out, it's kind of hard to click on it, since it's not a shape yet. Let's just move this thing closer to the inside. Since a part of it is coming out, it's kind of hard to click on it, since it's not a shape yet. So for the bottom area, it's pretty much the same. We are still going to be using the oval shape. It's on the bottom part and it's a lot thinner. 
Let's position it and it looks great. So let's expand it. And once it's expanded, let's remove the excess part, the one that's overlapping so it looks pretty much the same. And for the next area, Let's drag our reference closer so we can see what other areas have been distorted. Let's just manually do a pen tool for now. Something like this and let's put a fill on this shape and just erase the one that has been there. So it doesn't overlap. As you can see, the vectorizer has been good at most parts, but when it comes to something like this, some layering and wrapping become a mess. So we'll have to clean that up. Let's just replicate it and cover up the old one. Let's place it in the back by pressing Control and the left bracket. Open bracket, Control plus open bracket. It would send it to the back one layer and if we keep pressing it. And if you want to bring it to the front again, just press Control and close the bracket. So let's just experiment for a bit on where the layer should be. Now for the cross, it's very simple. Just use a rectangle shape. Skew it a little, then duplicate by clicking out and drag, and yeah, then there you have it. It's a cross that's slightly tilted. It's went into the back of the eyebrow. Yeah, it's pretty close. It's pretty pixelated, but it totally works. So we just trace that with the pencil and use the eyedropper tool to replicate the color, change the size a bit to match the vector we're using. So I actually searched for some variants of the font earlier and tried to see what would look closer to the font he had. So I'm just browsing and this is actually the closest font I've got, which I think is pretty close. The one he had just looks like it's slightly distorted, but the Staffer font really is the closest one. So we can just distort our font a little bit to match his artwork. We can do this by going to the properties of the font and just increasing the spacing. So it looks closer now, and I think that should work. Let's try to experiment this out a bit more. Yeah, I think this one looks great, and let's group both of these and center a line. This would ensure that our elements are centered. So the top part is done, let's go into the arch part above the character. And we can do this by making a shape and then let's try to match the curve of the shape into the curve of the text. Then let's use a shape text. This would allow us to type inside the shape which will follow its curve so we will be able to obtain or achieve what the effects would look like. But it looks slightly off. It's tilted, so let's move the font by clicking into this box. It's pretty small, but once we click on this, we can drag and reposition the text. It's really awkward. Let's just control and rotate this one. That looks great, and it's not as big. So we'll have to rotate it again and increase the font size, drag it a little bit. It's now definitely closer. That looks great. 
So let's just replicate the color and stroke of the text above. We can do this by going into its fill and stroke on its appearance. So let's go into the fill, change its color to white and the strokes don't look that great, but we can increase the stroke and change its properties. As you can see, there are pointy edges. You can remove this by going into the stroke and stroke properties. It looks better now. So let's move this one into the artwork and let's just make a copy. So if we mess it up or something else happens, we'll have a backup. And that's the same, the same one. So let's just copy the text and we can actually immediately copy the properties of the font that we created earlier. Press I to use the eyedropper tool. Click on the font to copy from its stroke size and fill. As you can see, you would have to apply it again. And for the last part would be the phone number. So let's just click Alt and drag some text so it would be duplicated and let's change its text to the phone number. It's pretty much done. One thing left to do is change its color to red and adjust some stroke thickness. So yeah, it pretty much fits. Let's apply the stroke. and change the properties again, so the pointy edges will be removed. Let's just tweak this one a little bit. Yeah, this looks great. So let's just center, make sure everything is centered. And they align, and this is pretty much done. We'll just select everything and fit it to our board and resize, that's all. And there you have it guys, thanks for following along on this tutorial where I turned an old school business card into a graphic t-shirt design. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how this looks after we press it on the shirt as well. So make sure you guys, by the way, bookmark the video in case you guys need to follow back at any particular steps that you guys may have missed. And drop a comment below if you guys have any questions. We're going to be using a next level 3600 shirt. And again, we're going to be pressing this onto the back side of the shirt. I'm going to go, go ahead and show you guys some tips and tricks as well. I have the shirt aligned right now. Keep in mind, since this is the back of the shirt, you have the neckline here. If I went ahead and just pressed this through, you're going to get some scorching here, and it's not going to look very nice. So you definitely want to use a heat press pillow if you guys are going to be pressing with, through the neckline or anything close to that neckline, especially if you're working on back of a shirt. So let's go ahead and slip the uh, heat press pillow into the shirt. And then what we're also using guys for the pressing on this particular job is our Geonite 16 by 20. It's a Geonite DK20. I just released a video on how we repaired this one. So make sure you guys take a look at that. But I have this pretty much set for 300 degrees and I have it pre-pressed at three seconds and we're gonna press at actually seven seconds. In this case, because I entered the pillow, I do wanna compensate for that. So I'm gonna need to uh, make this a little bit tighter or else I'm not gonna be able to press it. So normally righty is tidy, but this case with this press, righty is actually loosening up a little bit. So let me just test, that's still too much pressure. Let's bring this up. Let's go ahead and practice. Still too much pressure because the magnet does not lock, but it's almost there. A little bit more. Okay. 
There you go. So it's now locked in. It shows a pressure of about five. I, that's still a little bit lower than where I want to get it. So I'm just going to crank it up about three turns. Test it once more. Still at five. Let's go ahead and do a little bit more. Okay, so it's about six right now. I'm just gonna do one more crank. And then let's test the pressure. There you go, seven. So this is good. I'm happy with this one. It is pre-pressed. I'm ready to press the transfer. And as you see, I've pressed it so many times right now, but there is no scorch line because the heat press pillow absorbs any additional pressure. So this is the transfer. I'm just gonna go ahead and fold this halfway. I'm gonna go to the point, the end points there, cause that shows this is gonna be the mid point here. I'm just gonna eyeball that roughly there to get to the place. I'm gonna move my fingers here. My four fingers is roughly about three inches. And then I will take the corners right here and make sure that is even on both sides. Now everything is pretty even. I'm gonna go ahead and press seven seconds, 300 degrees heavy pressure. All right, so that's done with the pressing. I'm gonna use my microfiber cloth and I'm gonna give it some rubbing. Uh, this helps, especially if you're dealing with small letters, small numbers, you wanna make sure that you're helping um, rubbing this out a little bit so that your transfer will stick. Um, this is not absolutely necessary, but if you have a heat press that may not have enough pressure, and you're dealing with expensive shirt, it is always a good rule of thumb to just use a microfiber cloth. Just give it a quick rub down, that helps, that helps it out. And then we're gonna let this cool briefly, and then we're gonna let it peel. So again, I mentioned we we're gonna let this cool down. Our transfers can be peeled hot or cold, but with small details, we definitely recommend peeling cold, especially if you're using a heat press pillow where it, where it adds a lot of heat underneath here. That takes a little bit extra time to cool down. But once everything is set and done, let's go ahead and peel. There you go. I want to go ahead and put this transfer back on here. Let's do that second press. All right, so let's remove that and let's take a look at it. Again, next level, 3600 is the shirt that we ended up using. This is the graphic. It's nice and vectorized. It's all sharp. Corners are all um, nice and crisp. There's no pixelation there. There's no loss of color anywhere. And this, this design, because it has the black uh, outline to it, can work on a light or dark color shirt. Very universal, good choice in colors. Let me know what you guys think, guys. I'm gonna drop a link below um, to the other videos that I want you guys to check out. If you guys have any questions, I'll catch you guys on the next one, guys.